Blink, formerly known as Bitcoin Beach Wallet, is an easy onboarding mobile application that allows you to send and receive both Bitcoin and US dollars, as well as convert between them seamlessly. Today, we're going to take a look at how to set up and use the Blink Wallet. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. Bitcoin. Before we dive in, quick shout out to sponsors of the show, hodlhodl.com. If you are buying Bitcoin and you have a few priorities in mind, like peer to peer trading, instant self custody, and no KYC, meaning you don't have to give up your personal information to get Bitcoin, well, Hoddle Hoddle could be for you. You can go there and sign up within minutes with nothing more than an email address. And once you get in, super simple. Choose your currency, choose your payment method, and choose your amount, and then start viewing offers immediately and trading peer-to-peer KYC-free Bitcoin. They also have a lending platform uh, in which nothing ever gets rehypothecated. So be sure to check them out. Link is down below hodlhodl.com. That sign-up link is in the show notes. Uh, once you get your hands on Bitcoin and you're looking to store it long term for savings, you may want to consider some of the best hardware on the market coming from CoinKite. I love the Cold Card Mark IV. It's an absolute beast. It can be used simply, but it can also be used and uh, taken advantage of in terms of all the advanced features it has as well. They've also got a ton of other great stuff over here at CoinKite. The Tap Signer is a nice mobile option for your wallet. They've got the, the Block Clock, the Open Dime, the Sats cards, all kind of great stuff. And coming soon, the Cold Card Q1 looks insane. So be sure to check them out, coinkite.com. You can go use code BTC Sessions for 5% off everything in the store. Now, if you're looking to move beyond just a single device to secure your funds, you may want to dive into something called Multisig with Nunchuck. Nunchuck uh, is an awesome mobile wallet that allows you to set up uh, your own Multisig, or you can dive into their uh, assisted multi-sig program called Honey Badger. This allows you to use multiple different devices like the tap sign or the cold card and a ton of other hardware options to set up a digital vault with multiple keys that are required to unlock it. It also has baked in inheritance planning so that you know that your Bitcoin will get to your next of kin if anything happens to you. And one of my favorite parts about it, other than it being so simple to set up, is that there's no KYC required. You don't have to give up your private information to get going with it. So be sure to check them out. Head over to nunchuck.io to get started. And I do have a full tutorial on their Honey Badger program. And finally, huge shout out to Start9, your sovereign computing solution. As you go down your Bitcoin journey, you may start getting into things like running nodes. You may be unfamiliar with what that is, but Start9 has you covered there. You can buy plug and play devices, which will run an entire copy of the Bitcoin blockchain, and you'll be able to verify everything yourself. They have tons of great stuff. You can run Bitcoin Core, Lightning, Mempool.space, Join Market. You can host your own data like passwords, files, photos. You can also host Nostra Relays and Nostra Clients if you're into that. Uh, tons of great stuff coming out of them. Head to start9.com to check them out. Your entry level device is the Embassy One. And if you're looking to go Pro Star, you can get the Embassy Pro and host your whole life on that thing. But with that, let's wrap up and dive into the tutorial. So let's talk prerequisites here. What are you going to need to know in order to dive into this tutorial and start using Blink, AKA Bitcoin Beach Wallet? Well, the good news is I'm gonna start this from a very beginner place. If you haven't interacted with Bitcoin before, that's okay, you can start here. The one bit of information that you may need to know or that may be valuable to you is where can you get Bitcoin to load into this wallet and start utilizing it. And so that's gonna be different depending on where you live in the world. And, uh, and so 
I'm going to link to a couple resources down below. This is lightningnetworkstores.com and you can basically tick off what you're looking for in the side here. And so right now I have exchanges ticked off and it shows all the places where you can uh, purchase Bitcoin and use the Lightning Network, which this wallet uses. Uh, there's another resource here from Cointastical medium.com and uh, this is basically a blog post that gets up late, uh, updated at regular intervals with all of the great lightning resources out there including exchanges and that's the first thing they have up so if you're looking for where to grab bitcoin and then load it into this application we're going to be using well there you go those links are down below now outside of that just a little bit about uh this wallet uh it was originally as i said bitcoin beach wallet uh and that is out of el salvador um it is an alternative to something called chivo which is kind of like the national bitcoin wallet there because they're using bitcoin as legal tender um and from what i've heard the chivo wallet the the government one was or maybe still is experiencing some issues from time to time it's not as reliable so this is just a nice alternative for people to be able to look to but they are going for a global focus now as opposed to just focusing in el salvador and uh and opening up to regions around the globe um now this wallet utilizes something, and I've already said the name of it before, but it uses the Lightning Network. Now, what is that? It is Bitcoin. It's just a way of sending and receiving Bitcoin that is faster and cheaper. Um, and it's kind of the ideal way to be sending Bitcoin to and from uh, other individuals, buying stuff in stores, whatever it may be, especially in smaller denominations, um, as using main chain transactions, which are just not lightning transactions, regular Bitcoin transactions can be expensive at times. So uh, lightning is ideal for what we're going to be doing today. Um, it also utilizes something called stable sats. It's basically a way of being able to receive Bitcoin, but hold your value in US dollars if you choose to do so. The price of Bitcoin can go up and down. So that means what you can buy one day might be more or less depending on the price of Bitcoin. If you choose to, you can just say, hey, I'm just going to park that in US dollars and that will sit there and I don't need to worry about volatility, but you still have the convenience of being able to send and receive payments seamlessly using the Bitcoin network as just a payment rail. Um, it also allows you to swap between US dollars and Bitcoin seamlessly within the app and we'll show that when we get to it. Um, it also has things of where to spend your Bitcoin uh, and allows you to learn and earn within the application too. So we'll be getting into all of that. Um, the only last thing I'll say here is I'm not gonna show the initial setup, but it is very simple. Reason being is the initial setup is effectively giving your mobile phone number, they text you a code, and that becomes your login. Your login is your phone number. I don't feel like blasting my phone number all over the internet, so uh, I'll let you deal with that part. It's very simple. I don't think, think it needs an explanation. And I've used the wallet a little bit, so use will look a little bit different when you start up because you won't have a transaction history or a balance but other than that you'll be starting from the same place as me so let's dive in and let's get using blink wallet okay here we are in blink wallet and let's just do a little overview of the application itself and see what's in front of us up top you're gonna to have your total balance and this is reflective of whatever local currency you choose to display um, and it's an aggregate of both of your balances. And what I mean is, if you see under my accounts here, there's Bitcoin and there's stable sats, meaning US dollars. And so whatever these add up to will be presented up top in dollar terms. Okay. Um, you can also tap and that will hide your balances there. And uh, same with the little eyeball here, it hides your balances. Uh, as you move down, you have all of your actions that you can do. You can convert between Bitcoin and stable sats, you can receive, send, or you can scan a QR code, which is how you actually, if you're in front of a merchant or something, um, it's easy to just scan a QR code and that gives all of the information about how to pay them and you just simply hit the send button. 
Finally, down below, you can see any previous transactions. So I've already done a couple tests in and out of this wallet. And if I tap them, I get further information uh, about when it happened and any, any other little details that I might want to know. Now up top on the left hand side, there's a price chart for Bitcoin price and it tracks it over the last day, but you can also jump to one week, one month, one year, five years, whatever it may be, and get a good picture of kind of what Bitcoin has, has done over a certain time frame. Okay. You can back out of that. And then finally in the top right hand corner is your settings wheel. And when we go in here, there's a number of different things. I've scrolled up a little bit. I, I cut forward because your phone number for your account is shown up top. Uh, but the next option down is your Bitcoin Beach wallet address, soon to be renamed your uh, Blink wallet address. And if you tap on this, this allows you to set up what's known as a lightning address, which anybody can use anywhere to pay you without having to scan a QR code or receive additional information for you. So I'm going to set up mine right now. I'm going to hit set my BBW address and I'm going to call it BTC sessions. And then keep in mind, you won't be able to change this address after it's set. So I'm going to hit set. So now I have a lightning address and it is BTC sessions at pay.bbw.sv. Anybody with that information, which obviously looks a lot like a regular email address, will be able to send me money if they have a lightning wallet, a Bitcoin lightning wallet. I can also tap to copy from this screen or I can tap the little icon here to open up a, an option of what apps to send it through, messengers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. I can go back to home. I now have a lightning address with which I can receive. Now back in the settings, you can see that it is now listed up top. There's a simple copy button there right there. Uh, ways to get paid. Uh, it says, hey, you can uh, go ahead, you can use your Bitcoin wallet address, uh, you have a pay code, there's also a lightning cash register, there's a whole bunch of stuff, we're going to dive into those in the next section. Furthermore, down here, we see transaction limits. Now, this is a custodial wallet, um, and we'll dive into that in the, uh, the trade-off section at the end. But nonetheless, I can receive an unlimited amount at any time, uh, but withdrawing $2,000 per day total, sending from wallet user to wallet user within Bitcoin Beach Wallet or Blink Wallet, uh, that's $4,000 per day. And stable sat transfers, that's $10,000 per day, okay? It does have information on how you can increase your limits, so on and so forth, but just be aware that if you're gonna be moving more than this in a single day, then perhaps, um, or if you start bumping up against these thresholds of what's sitting in this wallet, which it's on your phone, so maybe don't do that. Uh, just be aware of the limits there. All right, going further down the list, you can also set your default language. You can set your default currency. So if I tap on this, you can choose any number of global currencies here. This is display only, so it will mean that your total balance is worth this much in this currency, but you don't actually hold that currency. Uh, furthermore, down at the bottom, default account. So this means whenever you receive a payment, um, what does it default to? Does it default to holding it in Bitcoin or does it default to holding it in US dollars? You can change this. I'm gonna keep it as Bitcoin for now, but if you'd like it, your money to basically be stable with the US dollar, you would just tap and switch right there. Uh, further down the list, security. You can set up things like biometric for fingerprint scan, uh, a pin code. You can hide your balance automatically, all of that stuff here. Further down, you can export all of your transactions as a file. Uh, you can take a look at your account and just log out or delete your account. And then finally down at the bottom, uh, something I'm gonna do right now is dark mode. I much prefer this with the look of the application. All right, now that we've gone through that, there is this little menu down at the bottom and these are, are your tabs to switch between your main home screen, 
you have contacts. And so a contact would be uh, an individual also using this wallet. When you send through that mechanism, uh, then it will add a contact right here in this tab. We'll see that later. The map shows various locations that accept Bitcoin. We'll take a look at this momentarily. And then the earn function where you can learn and earn Bitcoin at the same time. Again, we'll investigate further soon. Uh, but that is basically the overview of what's in front of you. And we're ready to start utilizing this wallet. Now, there are a variety of ways in which you can receive money to your wallet. And so we're just going to go through them one by one. First, we're going to hit the receive button on our home screen. And this brings up our main receive screen here. This is a scannable QR code. Uh, so anybody in front of you could scan this QR code to pay you. Um, you can also do things like set a specific amount, set a note. So a little note is just to, kind of for your own use, um, noting what the transaction was for, or you can use on chain. We'll talk about that momentarily. There's also a toggle switch between Bitcoin and USD. And so let's investigate and try receiving funds in a variety of ways. The first way we're going to do it is from the receive screen, we're going to stay with Bitcoin and we're going to request a specific amount. When you do this, it's going to say how many US dollars worth of Bitcoin would you like to receive? Alternatively, you can hit the two arrows and request a specific number of sats. In Bitcoin, there are 100 million sats in a whole Bitcoin, but most people just kind of defer to sats now. It's the smallest unit, it's pr the easiest to deal with, and you don't have to do decimals. So I'm going to do an invoice for 10,000 sats. And it will then reflect that amount in US dollars down below. How much is that currently worth? Perfect. That looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit set amount. What that does is it updates the QR code. So if somebody now scans it, it will request a specific amount from their wallet. If somebody is not in front of me to scan this, then I can simply tap and it will copy the relevant information onto my clipboard that I can then paste into a text message or an email or whatever I need to send it with. And somebody will be able to paste that into their wallet and pay me. So let's see what that looks like in practice. I'm going to open up another Bitcoin wallet that I have here on my phone and pretend that I'm the sender. I'm, I'm paying this invoice. So here I am in another wallet. Uh, I'm just going to simply hit the send button. I'm going to paste in the information I got. It fills out everything. It says, Hey, you're sending 10,000 sats. Um, and that's pretty much all I need to know. I can tinker with settings here. It's besides the point. This is what the person will see depending on the wallet they're using and they can simply hit pay and that transaction should go off no problem. So there it goes. Let's see what it looks like back in our wallet. Here, we get a nice little green check mark. We can see that we received some money and we can hit the back home button. We can see now an updated balance and we see a few seconds ago down below in transactions invoice, two dollars and 76 cents or 10,000 sats. We can tap on it for more information if we want. And it's all reflected up above. So we've just received a transaction to our wallet. So what about receiving a non-specific amount? Maybe we don't want to create um, an invoice with, with an amount, somebody's just sending whatever they feel. Okay, well, in this instance, we hit receive. And just on the main screen here, again, we can simply just tap without creating any sort of an invoice. And somebody would do the exact same thing. From their wallet, they would hit their send button. They would paste in what you sent them. And then they would have the option to add an amount. Okay, so I'll do another, maybe just so we can see that it's different, I'll do uh, 5,000 sats for this one. Okay, so now I can pay uh, an invoice that did not have a balance attached to it, and it will react exactly the same, but the sender got to set the amount they were sending. Back to home, 
Again, we see an updated balance and we see another transaction this time for $1.38 or 5,000 sats. So we just received Bitcoin, specifically Bitcoin to our Bitcoin balance uh, with an invoice and without an invoice. Up next, let's try receiving another way. Now, let's say you wanted specifically this time to receive in dollars and have your dollar balance updated. Well, you can do that just by tapping the USD option here. And you can either have a flexible amount, meaning you just tap without creating an invoice, or you can request a specific amount. If I do request a specific amount, given the balance is going to sit in dollars, it just asks you what dollar amount do you want, okay? So I'm gonna say, five dollars here i'm going to set the amount and just like before i'm going to tap and copy or somebody could scan this if they were right in front of me now for the sender they are not going to notice any difference they go send they paste in the information or scan it automatically determines how much bitcoin was that five dollars worth we have no idea that this is going to sit in dollars in that person's wallet. All we see is there's a request for this specific amount. Fantastic. It would be the same if we got to enter the information. If they had no invoice, they had no details there, and we had to manually enter in how much Bitcoin we were sending, same thing would be true. There's no indication that uh, they're going to be holding it in dollars. It's just the receiver gets to decide. So I'm gonna pay this invoice and we'll see what it looks like in the other wallet. Okay, so that has sent off. We can see received money just like last time. Back home, ah, now we have two separate balances. So you can see there's about $7.64 worth of Bitcoin or 27,000 sats. And then there are $5 of stable sats. So meaning this $5 will stay as $5. It won't be subject to the fluctuations of the price of Bitcoin. Then you can see in total, both of these balances, Bitcoin and my dollars, they add up to $12.64. So that is the top value there. It's reflective of what we've received. Now, there is one other way you can receive money. And that we saw earlier, we actually set it up first thing. If you go into settings and you hit copy here, this copy is your lightning address. Now, what does that look like in practice for somebody else? Well, you could just simply send that information to anybody. You could post it publicly in a profile on social media. Does not matter where it sits. Anybody with this information and a Bitcoin Lightning wallet can now send you money. They don't need a QR code. They don't need an invoice. They just need this information. And so I'll go back here to the main screen so we can see it when it, when it updates. But We'll go back to this other wallet that I had going. We're gonna hit send and we're gonna paste in that information. So I pasted in that address that we copied. Well, it says it knows where it's sending. We just need an amount now. So the person will manually enter an amount. And again, I'll send over another 10,000 sats and I'll hit confirm. Gives me a little uh, summary of what I'm doing and it should send off no problem. Okay, so that is now sent back in my wallet. Oh, look, there's an updated balance. We see a new incoming transaction for 10,000 sats. Now, that was automatically allocated to Bitcoin and not dollars in my account. However, remember in your settings, down here where it says default account, when you tap stable sats as your default account, any payment coming in will default to your US dollar amount. It will not sit as Bitcoin unless you specify otherwise. So if I shared my Lightning address with somebody and it came here, even though they're sending via Bitcoin, they're using a Bitcoin Lightning address, it would sit as US dollars in my account until I decided to change that. Now we're going to go through the ways in which we can send Bitcoin from our wallet. So 
very simply, to start, we're going to hit send. And it says we can paste in a username, invoice, or address. It also has this little square here, which will open up our camera to scan an invoice, or we can paste from our clipboard if we've copied an invoice from somewhere else, like a text message. So what I want to demo first is I've got on my computer screen here a, an invoice that I've created with a wallet extension in my browser called Albi. And I've created an invoice for a specific amount of Bitcoin. So I'm just going to hit the camera button here on my phone and I'm going to scan what's up on the screen. All right. So now let's get back to the phone here. Uh, we can see, hey, you're sending Bitcoin. Where are you going to send it from? You get to actually choose whether it comes from your Bitcoin balance or from your dollar balance. So you get to drop down and choose which of those you're going to use. I'm going to take it from the Bitcoin balance. Then it says this is the amount you're sending. 28 cents or a thousand sats and again if I it didn't have an amount it this would look different but for the time being this is an invoice that was created for me I'm gonna hit next this gives me uh, a, a total amount and uh, basically a summary of what I'm doing um, I can add a note or a label to it I'm gonna leave that be for now and then it says hey you're gonna be paying a fee now the Bitcoin network does have fees. Lightning is the cheap version of using Bitcoin. So you can see it's one sat. It's less than a penny. It doesn't even register. That sounds fine to me. So I'm going to hit confirm payment and it will go off. Should be no problem. And if I go to my browser here, I can see here in my incoming transactions, a few seconds ago, an invoice was paid for a thousand sats. So that transaction was successful. Now let's say somebody, instead of having a QR code in front of me to scan, somebody had created an invoice in their wallet and sent me over the information via text message. It ends up being this jumbled mess of digits, but as long as you copy it, it'll show up uh, as intended. So I'm just going to copy here just as an example, but we're going to pretend I copied it from a text message or an email or something like that. Over here in the wallet, I'm going to hit send. And I'm going to use the paste button to, uh, to basically paste in what I've just copied. Then I can hit next. I designate which account I want it to come from. And I can see also down below that it shows this is for 14 cents or 500 sats specifically. I can add a label if I want. I'll hit next. And then it says, hey, this is where it's going. This is the amount that's being sent. This is the account it's coming from, and your fee is one sat. Really not breaking the bank here. I'm going to hit confirm. All right, payment has been sent successfully, and we jump back to the main screen, and we can see the adjusted balance, and we can see the transaction headed out right there. Back in the other user's wallet, they'll get a notification. Hey, you received your payment and the payment will be listed as confirmed in their notifications. Now, if somebody gives me a generic QR code with no amount attached, or if they send over uh, a generic uh, invoice that doesn't have an amount attached, then it will look a little bit different. So let's just see what that looks like within the app. It would be the same whether I paste or whether I scan the QR code. Uh, but nonetheless, I hit send, I scan or paste in the information and hit next. This time it says again, which account do you want it to come from? And then it says a little bit different tap to set amount. So I'm going to tap here and you can choose an amount in dollars or amounts in sats. Uh, for now, I'll do say 5,000 sats. I'll set the amount. It gives me my summary here. I hit next. Final summary, including the fee, which it takes a second to register what that will be. In this instance, it's three sats, still below a penny, not a problem. I'm going to hit confirm payment. Payment sent successfully, bumps us back to our main screen. We see a reduced balance, updated transactions. The person over on their wallet will get a notification they received a transaction as well. 
So there are actually a couple other ways with which you can send people money from your wallet here. And one of which is known as a lightning address. We set up our own at the beginning of this video, but let's take a look at what it looks like to send to one yourself. So we're going to hit the send button and this is where you can input the lightning address. If you copied it or if you just happen to know somebody's lightning address, you can just type it in. So I'm going to use one that I have. It is BTC sessions btc sessions at geyser dot fund so i can hit next then it says okay what account do you want to spend from what amount do you want to send in this case let's just do dollars we'll do one dollar set the amount okay i'm not going to use a label for it we'll hit next now this sets up the whole transaction says this is where it's going this is the amount you're sending there's your note from this account, the fee is one sat. Sounds good, confirm payment. Perfect, so that actually links to the same wallet I was using earlier. So I'll show it. So we can see it here on my computer screen as well. This was a few seconds ago, a dollar worth, uh, which around 3,600 sats. And, uh, and that went to my lightning address, which was linked to that wallet. Now, the only difference between sending to a lightning address in an external wallet versus sending to somebody who has the same wallet, the Blink wallet, uh, would be that with Blink, when you send to somebody that has a Blink or Bitcoin Beach wallet, well, you will add them as a contact when you do that. So let's see that. I'm going to hit send. And then I actually on Twitter sent out a, a, a tweet and I was asking who has one of these so that I can test one. So uh, I'm going to send one to Oaken here. All right. So he is Oaken at blink.sv. All right. Oaken at blink.sv. I'm going to hit next. Which account do you want it to come from? Sounds good. I'll set the amount. I'll send a dollar worth. We'll get next. I won't leave a label. So give me a summary. Okay, that's where it's going. That's the amount. No note from this account. The fee is zero sats. Now, when you're sending from person to person with the same wallet, there are no fees associated within the Bitcoin Beach slash Blink ecosystem here. All right, so free of fees. You don't need to worry about it. I'll hit confirm payment. All right, payment sent successfully. Should be it bump me back there. All good. And now if I go to contacts, I now have a contact here that is also on the same ecosystem that is in the Blink ecosystem. So now I can send payments to Oaken, no problem, and I can just do it immediately from my contacts and uh, I don't have to go searching for his information anymore. I can just see, hey, you previously transacted with this person, there you go. Now I wanted to show a couple last things in terms of receiving payments here now that we have a lightning address. Um, if you go into your settings and again down to ways to get paid, we looked at this before but I wanted to touch on, on what this actually does here. So you, of course you've got your lightning address um, but you've also got a lightning cash register and a pay code. And so the cash register when you tap the little globe here, that'll open up on the web and uh, it gives you an actual point of sale terminal. So if you're a merchant, you can actually use this. You can use this on your phone. So it'll it'll pop up like so and you can put in an amount. Hey, I want uh, a dollar for this item that I'm selling. You create invoice. And again, it just brings up a nice, easy interface. Now, the main point of this is you don't necessarily need to be using your actual wallet in your phone to do it you can just get to it via the link so you can copy the link and you can open it up in any browser case in point here it is on my computer and I can simply use it from there and it will all go back to my Bitcoin Beach wallet or my blink wallet rather uh, furthermore there's also something that says uh, this is your your pay code you can print your pay code uh, or your address as 
a QR code that anybody can scan at any time. And uh, if we take a look at that from the web view, it looks like this. And you can actually print this on pieces of paper and paste them up anywhere inside your business, whatever you need or display it on a screen, but anybody can scan this and it just basically tells them where the payment is going um, and they don't need an invoice or anything special in order to use it. So a couple interesting and useful ways to be able to uh, receive payments via the same application as well. Now I wanted to mention there's one other way to receive Bitcoin. If I hit receive here, there is an option down at the bottom that says use a Bitcoin on-chain address. If I tap that, it's going to give me a regular Bitcoin receiving address. Now we haven't dealt with that throughout the entirety of this receiving process. Um, that's because Bitcoin on chain is becoming less and less ideal for small amounts and lightning has begun to replace that because it is faster and cheaper. However, it is still possible and it's important to note. So if somebody wants to send you money, they've got a regular Bitcoin wallet and they don't have lightning, well, this is where you would go for them to scan. You can request a specific amount as we did in other examples. You can add a note, you can do all of those things. You can even have it receive and sit as Bitcoin in your, or sit as dollars within your wallet. That's fine too. However, at times it can take longer for these transactions to go through. It can be much more expensive for the sender and I will say, if the person that is trying to send your money, send you money is saying that the fees are high as they're going to send, you should encourage them to learn about and start using the Lightning Network because they will have a much better experience in being able to send and receive cheaply. So with that said, you can receive on chain. It is possible. Uh, just know that there are trade-offs involved and that's where you would find it. Also note that when sending, uh, you can paste in a regular Bitcoin address as well. However, as I said, the fees will be higher. You can also scan a, a regular Bitcoin QR code for a regular payment. Um, the fees are higher when you're sending to a regular Bitcoin address. So if you see it pop up and you see a high fee involved, ask the person if they can accept lightning. And Note, if you're in El Salvador and somebody is using Chivo Wallet and you scan and it's a regular on-chain Bitcoin transaction, tell them that they do have Lightning, that they can change it. It's a couple taps to find Lightning instead of on-chain. It should be the default to be real, but um, you know, let them know that it is possible to receive a Lightning payment in there and just show them where to do that. And maybe let them know that it's cheaper and faster. So we've gone through the gamut of sending and receiving payments. There's a lot of different ways to do it, um, but more or less, the, the, all the same concepts apply. It's just personal preference. So what I'd like to show now is that you can actually convert between these two balances. Let's say you have a need to be sitting in dollars, or let's say you'd prefer to be sitting in Bitcoin. Um, well, you can do that. There's a convert button over here on the left. So when you tap that, you simply say, I want to go from this account to this account and you can push them back and forth. So from Bitcoin to USD or vice versa. So let's say um, I wanted to have my US dollar sitting in Bitcoin. Well, I can basically set a specific amount so I can enter that here or I can do a percentage. Maybe I want half, maybe I want 100%. Whatever it is, you just set the amount manually or you choose the percentage. I'll just do all of it for now as an example. So I set 100%, I hit next. All right, you're converting $5 USD to 18,124 sats. This is the conversion rate I'm getting. Okay, convert. All right, that is it. So my dollars are now Bitcoin. The same would be true if I did it the other way around. It's a couple quick clicks, okay? From Bitcoin to USD, I'm gonna convert 50% of it. Next, okay, you're converting this many sats. There's my rate, convert. There we go. I now have half of my money sitting in stable sats and half sitting in Bitcoin. So it's very simple, it's a couple quick clicks and you can adjust it however you see fit. 
The map function in Blink is very useful, especially if in your place, you're in a place that has adopted Bitcoin uh, quite a lot. So it starts by default when you click on the map, it'll start in El Zante, which is where Bitcoin Beach is. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different uh, individual businesses that you can click on. So let's say I just tapped on this one. Hey, this is, uh, I don't even know how to say it, Papurseria. I think that's right, Stephanie. You can pay the business. Uh, so if you do want to send them something, then it'll just go directly to them there. Uh, but you can also find them on the map. So you can click, it'll automatically open up Google Maps and it'll show you directions of how to get there, whatever you want. Um, and it's just an easy way to find businesses that are accepting Bitcoin. So there we go. I can figure out how to get there from wherever. Now, obviously, and if I zoom out, you'll begin to see uh, a bit more of an idea of how many merchants. This is obviously El Salvador, who has Bitcoin as legal tender. And this was the focus of the Bitcoin Beach wallet initially when they created it and meant it for the people of El Salvador. But there's now a focus on on seeing uh, other countries in the area. You can see a lot of uh, a lot of options popping up here in Guatemala and uh, and some in in Costa Rica and Honduras and Belize. Even um, there's there's a lot popping up here now. Um, of course, they need to continue to add more and more merchants. And, and in a lot of instances, just not everybody is listed here unless it's in one of these, uh, these spots here. But if you zoom out globally, you'll start to see more things popping up here in other jurisdictions. And hopefully over time, this will become more filled out because I know for a fact there's a ton of places all throughout Europe. There's obviously a ton of places all throughout North America. It's just that you know, this was the focus initially. And as this wallet begins to be used more in different places, you'll start to see this map fill out a ton. Uh, so a very useful feature to have within your Bitcoin wallet. The earn section here helps newcomers to Bitcoin learn what Bitcoin is while earning an extra few sats. So I can tap uh, basically a lesson. It'll say, what exactly is Bitcoin? I can earn a sat by doing so. So what is it? It's digital money. It can be transferred instantly and secured between two, any two people in the world without the need for a bank or any financial company in the middle. Hit earn one sat. All right. And then it says, I choose it. Correct. I earned one sat. Keep digging. And so then I can keep going through and I can earn. And as I move my way up, uh, the, the sat rewards um, maybe increase a little bit, but it's more just a fun way to earn, learn about Bitcoin and get a few extra sats in the process. Either way, awesome little thing to have in a Bitcoin wallet. Uh, it, it's always good to build your knowledge about what you're dealing with. Overall, Blink is an easy and simple to set up onboarding option for those looking to utilize Bitcoin, either just as a payments network or to actually hold their funds in Bitcoin itself. The ease of transitioning between dollars and Bitcoin are super simple. The ease of receiving and sending payments, again, is super simple. However, there are, of course, trade-offs. Uh, Blink Wallet, aka Bitcoin Beach Wallet, is a custodial option. If you don't know what that means, it's effectively like having a bank account. So that means that somebody else is more or less taking care of your money and allowing you to transact. For many of you, this may not be a big deal, but um, in terms of Bitcoiners, there is a bit of an ethos of being self-sovereign and and not leaving your money in the hands of others, and um, and that's okay too. So. If you are looking for other options, I'll, I'll link some other options in terms of alternatives. If you're looking to dive down that self-custody, self-sovereign rabbit hole, it's all down there. But it is, of course, a learning process. And I think it's OK that people start and learn and potentially use day to day an option like Blink. Um, now, what are those trade offs in terms of the the custodial option. Of course, it is not censorship resistant. So much like a bank account, if the bank for any reason decides to say, no, you can't 
pay or you can't do something, then that applies in this instance too. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I'm saying it is possible. Whereas if you hold Bitcoin in a wallet that is self custody, you hold your own money, um, then nobody can tell you no at any point. Um, the other thing is the limits. So if you're sending out of, of uh, Blink, then there are limits, daily limits, depending on what you're doing. This does not exist in a regular Bitcoin wallet. It is any amount at any time with no limits whatsoever. Okay, so another thing to keep in mind. The final thing here I'll say is in and around privacy. Of course, you have to use a mobile number in order to sign up and, and use uh, the Blink wallet. And, you know, that works just fine. It's super easy. Um, but in terms of privacy, just know that, of course, your, your phone number is being used and it could be in a database somewhere. And um, yeah, that's that. And that could be linked to a, a balance if somebody were to compromise that database. I'm just thinking adversarially here. Um, and, you know, it's important to, to know and understand the trade offs of using different applications. But nonetheless, it is simple, it is easy to use, and for day to day, especially smaller amounts or just back and forth. Um, I, I think it's uh, a definitely a viable option for those that are looking to learn and get started. In regards to the other wallets that I was using in this video, the browser-based one called Albi, I will link a tutorial to that one down below. And the one that I was using on my phone was actually a combination of two things because it was all self-custodial. It was my own money, no custodian whatsoever. The mobile app was called Zeus and it was linked to my own Lightning node, which is another step down the rabbit hole. You don't need to know what that is right now, but that particular lightning node was using something called voltage and I'll link to that tutorial in the show notes as well um, in a tutorial that I did about Noster. Anyways, if you're confused by all of that terminology, no worries, you can dive down the rabbit hole as time comes, start small baby steps and go from there. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do like, subscribe, and share, especially if you're new here, if you're just learning for the first time. Uh, share this around to anybody that may benefit for it and drop a subscribe because you're sure to more learn plenty more about Bitcoin as you dive into more tutorials. Uh, if you want to support the show, again, uh, you can also hit up the sponsors that I mentioned down below, Hoddle Hoddle, CoinKite, Nunchuck, and Start9, uh, or you can go visit my website btcsessions.ca. There's a ton of free information there. You can also book me for one-on-ones there. So if the one-on-one -on -one tutorials online, uh, the videos are not enough and you need some handholding, you can book me for private sessions there. You can also check my traveling workshops if I happen to be in the area. And finally, you can drop a lightning tip there. There's a QR code that you can scan from any lightning wallet, including the one we just reviewed, or you can even click the uh, QR code and it'll take you to my Geyser Fund page and you can see even more details there and drop sets if you see fit. With that, I am out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening. I'll see you guys next time for your daily session. Hold all the Bitcoin.